now. Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. 637 on WMAL. Happy Monday morning to you, Brian Eamon. Rick Fowler in for Brian Wilson this morning. James Bamford joins us now. He's written a couple of books on the NSA. And his latest book is called The Shadow Factory. He recently wrote an article in Wired Magazine. A lot of people are talking about about what the NSA is doing in Utah, a little town called Bluffdale, where they're building a giant, giant facility at the cost of $2 billion. What exactly is going on there? Mr. Bamford, good, for, good to have you on. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So what exactly is the NSA doing in Utah? What is this facility? Well, it's an enormous data center. NSA's job is intercepting communications and breaking codes, and uh, it needs a place to put all that uh, data, all the telephone calls, the emails, the uh, tweets, uh, um, everything that it picks up from uh, around the world. It has a need to store it someplace, so that's why they're building this 1 million square foot data center in, in Utah. And it's also the sort of the culmination of a, a decade's worth of building by NSA to uh, uh, pretty much redo the agency around the world. Now, is this data that they're collecting, you're talking about email and text and other things that are out there, are they from Americans to Americans, or are they just overseas? Well, there's a, a lot of information that's to Americans and from Americans uh, in, involved in Americans communicating overseas. Uh, to communicate within the country from uh, one part of the country to another, the uh, NSA needs a warrant. Uh, however, during the Bush administration, they violated that, and there's always a question as to whether they're eavesdropping domestically, legally, or not. So if somebody sent an email to their relative in California from here in Virginia, is that something that the NSA is looking at? I mean, is there some kind of formula? I mean, is there some kind of code that, they're, 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 that they have in place that uh, flags you know, something that is questionable when it comes to an email or some kind of text or a tweet? Well, they have these uh, algorithms which uh, look for words or names or phrases or email addresses. Uh, uh, so it may be a combination of words that uh, might be used in an email that might get picked up or uh, the, the telephone number of somebody they, uh, they suspect. The problem is there's uh, been about a million people on the watch list, many of them innocent people who were there by mistake. Ted Kennedy was one of them, and it took him about uh, three or four months to get off the watch list. So it's a very... A hazardous uh, watch list because there are so many people on there that shouldn't be on there. Do you have examples of a key word or like getting a text from China? Is that something that could get you <laughs> on a list? Well, um, I interviewed one uh, person who was a uh, uh, basically worked for NSA as an eavesdropper down in uh, Georgia. That's the area that focuses on the Middle East. And they were picking up uh, everything to and from. Uh, uh, journalists uh, in the United States and eavesdropping on uh, intimate conversations they were telling me. So um, it, it could be a combination of things, or it could be uh, what you're doing for a living, or it could be a lot of other factors that might go into it. Why Utah? Well, uh, Orrin Hatch, for one thing, the senator from Utah, was chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, so I think he had a lot to do with it. And the other thing is that it's a... Uh, uh, a, they had a lot of room out there at this uh, place where they built it. It was uh, called Camp Williams, which is a, a National Guard base. And the third reason, I think, was uh, the electricity is cheaper there than it is in Maryland and a lot of other places. And they need a lot of electricity because of the power to that is needed to generate this. I would imagine there are thousands of computers at this facility. Well, servers, storage devices, and that type of, uh, and computers also, and all that kind of technology and the amount of power that the uh this one building will use is almost the same amount of power that's used in the entire city of salt lake city so it needs an awful lot of power what do, what do you now you've written a couple of books on the nsa and there's obviously a lot of controversy surrounding this agency um which doesn't have a lot of oversight or am i wrong about that no they don't have a lot of oversight uh and the oversight that they had has been uh, reduced uh, in the in the past few years. They, the only oversight really is uh, the Senate and House Intelligence Committee uh, committees, which aren't, which never have uh, been doing very good. They missed the entire fact that the NSA was violating the law for years during the Bush administration. And the only other uh, uh, oversight is the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. 
And again, during the Bush administration, they just bypassed that court. And after that was discovered, after the New York Times revealed it, the um, uh, agents, well, the, the Congress basically watered down the protection from the FISA court. And so there's less protection now than there ever has, basically, than there's been since 1978. Now, the NSA says that of, your, of your story that, you know, a lot of it is overblown, um, it's, and, and they say some of the stuff is just simply not true. They don't want to get into the details of it, which is convenient. But I have, have to ask you, since you, you, you know a lot of people apparently in the NSA, I guess you have sources there or people who used to work there, do we know at all if they've played any role in perhaps thwarting a attack on the United States or elsewhere? Well, in terms of sources, uh, one of the people that I quote from uh, on the record, I mean, he doesn't even uh, mind if I use his name in the article that I just did for Wired, uh, was Bill Denning, and he r- basically created and ran the worldwide eavesdropping network that NSA uh, has, and he automated that network. And uh, he left after nearly 40 years, and he was a senior official the civilian equivalent of a ge- uh, general, mm-hmm. uh, because he didn't like the fact that NSA was eavesdropping on uh, United States and left it basically in protest, and he told me all about it in, in my article. Um, but uh, what was the other part? It was whether or not we know that they've actually helped stop an attack on the United States. Well, I've asked a lot of people, and nobody's been able to tell me any great success they've had in, uh, in stopping uh, a, a major attack, but they've failed in... In all the major attacks, uh, they failed in uh, the first World Trade Center bombing, the uh, attack on the USS Cole, uh, the attack on the U.S. embassies in East Africa of 9-11, uh, the underwear bomber uh, that flew into Detroit on Christmas Day, and the um, uh, Times Square bomber. So they were never able to pick up any indications on, on those, and I haven't heard of any from the sources I talked to, including Bill Denny, who was there for close to 40 years. Right. Um, of any great successes. I, mean, I don't know the Defense Secretary, Liam Planetta, recently said that what keeps him up at night is the potential of a cyber attack, and there's going to be a lot of talk this week in Congress about a cyber security bill in which it seems that the federal government would be partnering with the private sector to prevent such attacks on power grids in the banking industry. And my my understanding is that the NSA would be involved in that. Is that also your understanding? Um, well, NSA would play a part in that, depending on which bill is chosen and, and how they implement it. But a- NSA has been given a major role in the whole cyber war uh, issue because the director of NSA was given a fourth star, the, the most senior uh, an NSA director has ever um, uh, been promoted to, and put in charge of uh, what's called a cyber command, right. uh, which is a n- new command for the uh, Department of Defense, so it'll play a major role in that, uh, depending on which bill is uh, is approved. All right. Um, thank you very much for your time, Mr. Branford. It's a very fascinating article. Look forward to reading more about it. Thank you.